I was in World War II in the Navy. And your rank, sir? I was a uh, uh, seaman second class and a, an ensign. Uh, and where did you serve? In the Pacific. Specifically? Uh, well, throughout the Pacific. We went the whole Pacific and even to the uh, to the Bahrain Island to get oil. I was on a fleet oiler. So we picked up oil in the Bahrain Islands and uh, uh, the Middle East now it's pop and then we would oil ships with uh, for one period, for six months, uh, we were in Shanghai, China, and uh, served and fueled Japanese warships going back to Japan because the Japanese had surrendered. Hmm. Bahrain Island, how are you going to spell that? Uh, B H A R A I N. All right, let's start back with when you began in boot camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, were you, I assume you drafted? I was drafted, but it's an unusual story. Keep talking. I uh, was, uh, at the first draft, I, uh, at the time of the draft, I was too young. And I didn't... Uh, I didn't um, uh, enlist. I was in school when I finally was drafted. I was in uh, the University of Chicago and I was deferred because I had been selected to be a weatherman uh, in the Army, to be trained as a weatherman for the Tuskegee air group. Uh, but it turned out that they had the two blacks who were going to be the weathermen for the Tuskegee Airmen. Mm -hmm. So now I was put on uh, the general, I had to go back and I was now put on the general draft list. Meanwhile I worked at, uh, I graduated and worked at Sherman Williams Paint Company. I was drafted from Sharon Williams. Uh, I was then drafted. At uh, uh, the draft, I then went down to uh, uh, get into one of the services. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy just stamped my card, Navy. So uh, from they there, the Navy. I went to Great Lakes Naval Training Station. Uh -huh. uh, as uh, I, uh, what, what were they called? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I was a draftee, but uh, I finished uh, at Great Lakes Naval Training Station as a seaman second class, but I. Uh, was in the outgoing unit mm -hmm. uh, helping get other seamen who finished, black seamen who finished away. But the officer there said that I had to take the officer's training program that was being offered. The officer, the white officer said that I had to take the exam. I took the exam. I didn't know that there was a program that they wanted to train some blacks to be uh, officers on an integrated ship. See, integration didn't come mm -hmm. until 1949. Mm -hmm. So I went, uh, I took the exam, passed it, and I went to uh, uh, Notre Dame, wow. where I was one of, uh, I was the only black, and I guess they had about 1,300 uh, uh, midshipmen who were training to be officers hmm. from all the country, from all over the country. So I was the one black in this group of 1,300. Wow. What year was that? 1940. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Make sure. 
1945. Okay. Do you remember the first days of being in boot camp? What, the first thing what? First days of being in boot camp. Yeah. Can you tell me something about that? What was it like for you and some of the experiences you had? Well, when we went up to the Great Lakes, uh, I mean, uh, to uh, uh, yeah, Great Lakes land, they had us waiting because they were waiting until the black group came to be selected. They had to wait, for, but they kept us waiting all day while groups of, of whites were going. As a group, we had to wait until our our uh, uh, numbers were enough to put us in the the uh, in the barracks. And I went up and complained because they were making us wait all day while these other guys were coming and going. So. Uh, it wasn't a very pleasant day, uh, and by the time it was near the end of the day, when we finally went to the, the uh, to our quarters. Okay, how many were in that group? Do you remember? Forty, I think. Right. I think it was forty. Mm -hmm. And they were from all over. From all over, yeah. Okay. Uh, um, do you remember any of the instructors that you had? At Great Lakes. Yeah, but I don't remember the name. <laughs> I remember the guy who was uh, our instructor. Uh, Great Lakes Label Training Station is on uh, Lake Michigan, of course. Mm -hmm. And I remember he used to get us up at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning to go out and drill. And it was in the winter and it was cold. And, uh, and he was a tough guy. I forget his name. He was Navy or um, Marine? Hmm? Was he Navy or Marine? He was a Navy. He, he was, was naval. a uh, petty officer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so he marched you around and oh, what type marched, of training did you do? Oh, we marched up and down and uh, uh, learned the manual of arms. Uh, we did uh, had uh, uh, exercise programs. Okay. Uh, I was the company honor man. Uh, I was selected by everybody as the best in the group. But uh, we also did signal work and uh, okay. that sort of stuff. Was it, um, how did you get through that experience? Hmm? How did you get through that experience? Oh, it was okay. I didn't have any trouble. The other guys were not used to being uh, they were a little younger than I was for mm. the most part, mm -hmm. and so I had fun. Okay, so you had a college degree at that point, and I had were a, a little bit degree. older. Yes. So that made a difference. Yes, and some of those kids were 18 years old by then. Yeah. Um, was it the same when you got into the officer's program? Well, in the officer's program, most of the kids in the uh, at Great Lakes, the blacks were from that, from the middle Midwest region. Okay. When I got into the officers program, all of the people were, all of the kids were college graduates. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, when they drafted whites for college graduates, they immediately went into midshipman school if they were in the Navy. Here I was, a black, and I had to go through a regular boot camp. When I got to uh, uh, Notre Dame as the only black, there were kids from all, from the uh, well eastern half of the country and a bunch of southerners mm. in there. And mm. boy, uh, that was forty-five. Uh, I was saying, man, they didn't. There, there were some who uh, just couldn't imagine a black being there. Uh, but it was pretty much individual effort. Uh, and the guys who that didn't like blacks just mainly stayed away from me. Okay. Uh, anything happened that was unpleasant or? Oh yeah, a couple of guys tried to, to we played touch football for exercise, and a couple of guys tried to uh, rough me up, 
but I roughed them up instead. So. <laughs> that was the only real unpleasant thing. But as usual, we didn't have much time to to talk when we had the time off. The guys that wanted to talk to me did. Okay. Who were they? Do you remember? Oh, again, I forget the names, but. Uh, well, you mentioned the Southern gentlemen stayed oh, to the. There weren't the Southerners. Most okay. of the guys that, that I talked to were from the, the North, uh, from Wyoming, and um, yeah, up up north. Okay. Uh -huh. Huh. I've got a. I've got a. Maybe you'd like to see my book. Sure. Yeah, they put out a uh, war book. And this is the capstan? That's the capstan. That's uh, our class book. From Notre Dame? From Notre Dame. Hmm. And these were all the young officers? Those already the officers. Okay. Then, then they had us divided by companies according to... Uh, Which company were you in? Uh... <laughs> I forget, at 13, 12, or, th uh, well, it's alphabetical. Okay. okay. Hard to tell, I know. <laughs> you were the only black man in the whole group? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Did you feel discrimination a lot at that point? Or was well, it just... The only thing, they used to watch us. We had to run between classes. And uh, if, they, if you didn't run, they would shout at you, you know, get moving. And I remember walking and... Uh, one from one class and an officer shouting out at me, uh, listen, Stuart, get running. And he knew my name because I was the only black. He wouldn't have known a white guy's name. <laughs> but you see, that, uh, Interesting. May we borrow this? Hmm? May we borrow this book? Yeah. And, and I'll bring it back. Okay. Okay. Make sure you do that. Oh, I would. Yeah. But we'll we'll photograph a couple of the okay. pages. That'll be terrific. All right, let's um, let me just make sure that you're sitting back. Place again. Let's talk about um, where you went first after oh. officer school. Okay. Well, it was funny because as you uh, were graduating. They called you together to tell you your assignment, mm -hmm. and people cheered. You know, they'd get uh, some would get uh, aircraft carriers, and, and I was laughing with the guys because I said, huh, "I'm black. They're just going to send me. I'm not even going to leave the United States because they don't have. They only have those third. Uh, I thought it was twelve black officers, and so." And they called out and said to me, the AO-25, the Sabine. And I, and I said, what's that? A fleet oiler? Because the fleet oilers are named after rivers. Okay. So the people knew it was a Sabine, that it was a, a fleet oiler. And uh, they knew that there weren't any fleet oilers in the United States waters. 
so that I had to be going out into the Pacific uh, uh, for more active duty. And uh, they laughed at me because I'd been laughing at them. Uh, and so I got a, a transport ship from there to Japan, which had just surrendered. Okay. And, uh, and I flew, <clears throat> flew from Tokyo to Shanghai and went on board the ship there. Hmm. What happened when you went on board the ship? Can you tell <laughs> me about that? Oh yeah, I remember that because uh, at the time Stuart's mates uniforms were the same as officers uniform except that they didn't have gold braid. Uh -huh. Right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the officer of the de deck looked over and saw this new shipment of replacements coming and he saw me and he said, hey, we've got a new steward's mate. He, he told me later, he said to himself, and then he said, hey, wait a minute, that guy's got gold braid. We don't have any officers, any uh, black officers in this. And when I came up and was an officer, he was just stunned by the the fact that uh, they have one black seaman on there too. Okay. But uh, this guy was stunned that a, now he had first officer he'd ever seen, black officer. Was he happy stunned or unhappy? Well, he was. Okay. And uh, most of the other guys on the ship were, uh, they didn't care. They were, uh, all they knew was it's time to, replacements were coming to get them home. Hmm. And then what happened? Um, what, did you have a, a particular job assignment at that point? Oh, yes, I was uh, the second division officer. Okay. The, the seamen are divided into persons on a fleet oiler, divided into first, second, and engineering divisions. And I was second, which is from the midship to the, uh, the, the aft uh, okay. uh, of the ship. The only guy that was really unkind to me was the, uh, at the start, was the uh, uh, second in command uh, because he was an old Navy guy, had been in the Navy 25 or more years and had been promoted to an officer because mm -hmm. of that long service and he just couldn't imagine a black being an officer and he said some uh, he was, he said, curse me. And uh, okay. in our ship, uh, the sailors usually went down, we had a long flight of stairs mm -hmm. to a pump room. And when they got in, mad with one another, they would go down there, close the door, and have a fight. Ah. So I invited him down there when he, had, after he cursed me. And, uh, he didn't, he wouldn't go. So everybody knew that he was uh, now not living up to what was the custom. <laughs> so he was the one in disgrace, not me. Okay. Uh, but he was the only one that gave you a hard time, really. Oh, yeah. The other guys, remember, I was the officer. And True. You, you know, and they didn't uh, get court martial for, uh, mm -hmm. you're an officer and a gentleman, and they can't. They can't touch you. Better not touch you. Better not. Um, that was obviously the first day that you arrived. Yes. Um, how long did you stay there? And then where, I was where in, did you go next? Uh, I, uh, the service, I, I was on the sea for a, a year be, without uh, staying, getting to to stay on the shore even, and just slept and moved about on the ship. So overall it was around a, uh, a year and a couple of months that I was at sea. Okay. Can you give me a typical day from getting up in the morning, what time did you get up in the morning, <coughs> what did you normally do during the course well, of the day? Um, you served, an officer has certain duties like uh, we had to clean the ship. I was the athletic officer. Okay. So I had to have, 
you have exercise programs for all of the crew, not just my group, all day long. So, uh, except when I had to go on watch up uh, and guide the ship, uh, be the officer in charge of the ship. But my work day was doing the athletic work, having these guys. Uh, and I had a team, I had a boxing team uh, that I had to oversee the training for. Okay. Uh, but mostly that was it. I uh, worked with the uh, uh, s the sailors on athletic thing, and then I did the service, as I say. I had to be on watch, which meant mm -hmm. I went up and helped the captain. The captain or his officer, first officer, ran the ship, but I was up there directing the the sailors who were the navigation and various uh, people uh, running the ship and watching out uh, for uh, uh, planes. Fortunately for us, the war had ended, so the bombers that we saw were uh, American bombers. We felt one day, though, that uh, we saw a Japanese uh, uh, flight, and we felt that maybe those guys hadn't learned that the war was over. And uh, so we banned the guns, but uh, fortunately it was, they knew. Okay. Mm -hmm. What time did you normally get up in the morning? Uh, quarters was uh, around six o'clock, uh, and you had breakfast around seven, mm -hmm. and uh, that went on till nine at night. But then you'd have watches, you see, mm -hmm. in between, so you'd uh, you'd go to uh, your crew was divided into port and starboard. That crew, that uh, that group was only. Uh, uh, a third of my men that I that okay. was in charge of because they were divided in these watches mm -hmm. uh, that uh, were on duty for that day. When they were not on duty, then they had exercise programs or they took classes and such things. Okay. Uh, Do you remember any of their names? No, I don't. I, I, I probably have some names back in uh, uh, my pile of stuff because a number of the officers, well, a number of the men, a couple of them lived near Chicago where I lived, uh, and uh, they call when they got out of the service before I did. They call my mother and okay. said I was a good guy and so forth and so on. So several of them call my mother, but it's so long ago I. I don't remember. What did your parents think when you said you were? going to go in the Navy and then go in to become an officer. Oh, my, they, my father said, oh, you know, these you guys aren't in any real war or anything because he remembered World War I. Well, my mother was just very proud of me. They came up to Notre Dame for my graduation huh. and drove me home rather than me riding the train to get home. Would you have been allowed to ride with everybody else in the train? Or were they oh, yeah, still in separate? Chicago, the, uh, the the trains weren't uh, uh, segregated in okay. in Illinois at that time. When I went to work after the war in uh, uh, Oak Ridge, they were, but uh, not hmm. uh, that time. Interesting. Couldn't go to the movie in uh, South Bend though, because it, they uh, they were segregated. Okay. Uh, didn't allow blacks. What did they say, or were there signs, or did somebody say something to you? Uh, if you want to want to go to the movie, mm -hmm. well, they just wouldn't give you a ticket when you went up to purchase a ticket. What would they say? No tickets, or didn't have to say anything. Everybody knew that they wouldn't. Uh, everybody in town knew that they couldn't. Uh, you couldn't go to the movie. Hmm. Things have changed. Mm-hmm. Things well, changed. after the war, as I say, when I went down to Oak Ridge, they had uh, the big thing popular was the outdoor movie mm -hmm. fashion, and uh, they would have let us go to the movies, if, those outdoor movies in Oak Ridge, if we had been with the white people in a white person's car. Then, needless to say, didn't go to the movie. Okay.
Mm -hmm. All right. Um, you mentioned that you went into service after the war had just finished. Yes. Did you ever see any combat? No. No. Okay. Um, did you ever have any casualties of men? Injuries? Any, what? any casualties with the men? Uh, well, yes, we had uh, uh, men injured doing daily work. When we were in Shanghai, every morning we used to watch the dead bodies from the Chinese float down. But uh, I remember once when we had to put a line on the uh, uh, from our ship, and it was a dangerous job. I selected doing the job rather than have one of my men do it because the tide was, there was a typhoon in Hawaii and the effects were uh, mm. affecting Shanghai, uh, the Wangpu River where we were, and I uh, decided to put the line in myself because I didn't want one of my men to get drowned while I was commanding the effort, so I did the work. What? You had to pull something in? Or? We, we were tied up to a boy. Okay. And uh, a, a merchant ship was taking uh, oil from us. The lines weren't strong enough when this war, uh, when the typhoon effect came. Okay. And so we had to put an extra big line through the boy to hold, uh, and uh, it was pitching up and down. And I, so I got, and you had to get on the boy, and it would go up and then come down below water, and you'd have to hop off well, when it went below water. But it wasn't that quick, you know, it mm -hmm. went up and then came. And so uh, got me a drink. I, I, uh, uh, I put the, uh, the, the wine through the boy, and the doctor, I got all wet, and the doctor gave me some. Uh, medicinal brandy to, <laughs> to warm me up. But uh, none of our men, yes, they, you know, they had ex accidents, mm -hmm. falling and so forth, but uh, that was a normal thing. Okay. Um, what was your most memorable experience of being on that ship? <laughs> The, when we got to the Bryan Islands, as I say, in the uh, 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 off of Saudi Arabia, it is, mm -hmm. and uh, the captain was uh, invited by the local sheik to have dinner, and uh, he then wanted to have an officer who had a dress uniform to go with him. Most of us didn't. The only guy that had a dress uniform was the uh, ship's uh, d uh, doctor. He went with him and the most memorable thing was he came back <clears throat> and he said as guests they were offered a delicacy from the sheep, the eyeball of the sheep. That was my most memorable. I experiment. I I missed the uh, uh, having to eat that ship's eyeball, she, the she, the sheep's eyeball. But uh, one of the I met one of the other black officers, and he said the guys he was a na he was a navigator, and he uh, he said that. Uh, he just had a miserable time because the guys talked mean to him. And I later, and some of the guys were, were transferred to my ship and said that they had bullied him, the whites had bullied him, so he was afraid of what, uh, mm -hmm. but I didn't, I didn't, that was all hearsay. Hmm. Um, when you think about the experiences, what was perhaps the happiest experience you had while you were in the Navy? Well, when the guys told me that I was their favorite officer. Tell me about that. Well, uh, a couple of guys were going home <laughs> and they said that uh, they had considered me the best guy that they uh, had ever uh, been associated with in the, in the Navy. So. Uh, 
when you're in that close contact, you know, it's uh, it's pretty nice to have the guy say, "You're, in, I'm under your command, but you're a great, great guy." Hmm. Well, that was a happy feeling. Yes, that's a very nice compliment. Mm -hmm. Very nice compliment. Did you get any awards and citations, or are they all oh, no. listed on the sheet? No. The, no? No. Okay. Just got the usual, you know, banners for being in the Pacific and uh, okay. that's all, nothing. nothing. Um, let's talk a little bit about your family now. Mm -hmm. How did they stay in touch with you? Uh, how did, what? How oh, did your did family we, stay in touch we, uh, with you? We wrote letters and censored, and they were censored. Okay, they were censored. Mm -hmm. And um, I couldn't tell them where I was. Mm. Mm -hmm. But people would then go leave and go back to mm -hmm. Chicago and yes. call your family, so yes. they knew. Okay. Um, what was the food like when you were in the Navy? Well, I only, uh, most of my life I've only eaten two meals a day. Uh, here I eat three meals. I pick a three meal. The food in the Navy was uh, ordinary, but I only ate two meals generally. In the officer's mess, you're seated according to your length of service or your rank. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't leave the table until the commanding, the highest officer left. And that protocol with me not being very hungry meant that I uh, uh, would have to sit there. So I generally went to only two meals. And most of our food, most of the supplies came from uh, Australia. And so the meat was always not lamb, but sheep. And that didn't appeal to me as meat very much. And uh, I didn't, I don't like breakfast even now. So. I didn't like to go for bacon and eggs, and uh, I just didn't, uh, it was adequate food, but I didn't care for it. Oh, then we got a, uh, a um, we had an, uh, an ice cream machine, and they finally got supplies for making ice cream. So I would eat practically every other day, but on the day I didn't eat in the mess, I would have ice cream. What's your favorite ice cream? <laughs> vanilla. Vanilla? Yeah. Why vanilla? Uh, I don't really, I don't really know. Uh, just appeals to me. Okay. Okay. Um, you mentioned supplies, that you got food supplies in from Australia. What about your other supplies? Did you ever uh, lack supply from them? ships. Okay. And they'd have to bring water to us. We made our water, but we used most of our water for for showering and so mm -hmm. forth. And they taught us they taught us how to shower. You you go in and wet yourself, then soap, and then you rinse off. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of our supplies came from pl supply ships that we rendezvoused with. Okay. And, they, and what they gave us was mainly food because we had most everything else. Okay. And the war was over? Yes. Okay. Um, feelings of pressure or stress? Did you ever feel pressure or stress while in the Navy? Oh, I hated being away from home, but uh, I, I can't really say that I had big stress. I was, well, I remember serving as one of our, a couple of our men were court martial and they asked me to be their lawyer. Mm. And I had to go to the court martial as their lawyer. And most of the, and this was a, a district thing when we were uh, uh, in, in Shanghai and the officers there were just so startled to see this black officer mm. that uh, that startled. And then we went to uh, the officers' quarter in uh, in Shanghai. I remember, and there was a Russian girl there. The uh, Russian 
elite had f fled Russia and okay. were in Shanghai. And this girl came over and asked me to dance. And boy, one of the other officers got so mad, he came over and threatened me uh, hmm. because the girl had asked me to dance. Now, I knew that uh, uh, the guys wouldn't like me dancing with her, so I refused to dance with her. Okay. In fact, <laughs> that was an incident. She, I said, I don't know how to dance or something like, or I can't dance. I said, I can't dance, I guess. And she said, I thought all niggers could dance. <laughs> <laughs> she, but she wasn't, she didn't know she was being insulted. But this guy came up and he was so mad because uh, he, he wanted to uh, uh, fight with me. But my, a couple of the guys I had gone to the place with, my officers, got up and uh, started uh, protecting me okay. right away because of the... Uh, were you, was there discrimination at the officers clubs? No. No. No, there wasn't any. Well, I was the only black officer okay. in the, on any ship in that place. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you just had a lot of suntan. Did I have a lot of content? <laughs> no, you had a lot of suntan. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, did you have a good luck charm or anything that you took with you or carried with you? No, I didn't have any. No. No? Don't. I'm a sci I got a PhD in chemistry. Okay. And I was a scientist in my training and so forth. So those things never... Won't work. Um, entertainment. What did people do for entertainment while you were there? Uh, they had uh, uh, poor movies. Uh, that they would exchange regularly, but uh, that was on our ship. Uh, oh, we played uh, uh, soccer and uh, uh, that kind of sort of thing, but it was hard because of the wind. If you were traveling, uh, mm. the wind taking the ball. But there was there was just uh, uh, the crew played gambled and so forth and. We officers gambled. But, okay. Uh, that was uh, that was it. Did uh, you play cards gambled or? Yeah, but, okay. you know, play poker or something like that. All right. But, Did you ever have any entertainers that you went no, to see the entertainment no, shows? No, like we were. I say when we were in Shanghai, we had some entertainment, but uh, no, no, not on our ship. Okay. What did, who, do you remember any of the entertainers? Any. Do you remember any of the entertainers? No, I don't. I remember when we were in, uh, when I was in bootleg camp uh, and, uh, uh, you know, before I became an officer, the Harlem Globetrotters uh, came up to the camp and we had to march a long distance to see the Harlem Globetrotters. But that's the only entertainment I'd had uh, in uh, the service. When I was waiting to be shipped out in San Francisco, uh, I went to a USO where they had, you know. Okay. So. Was it a show or just the, the facility? Just a dance. And okay. A was that segregated? Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, I remember going to a dance, but it was all blacks. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know whether it was because uh, required or what, but I do know, I, yes, I do remember this. When I went to San Francisco mm -hmm. as a Navy officer waiting to be shipped off, I couldn't stay at the two top uh, hotels in San Francisco. <coughs> they directed me, pardon me, to the one a black hotel in San Francisco. Hmm. I remember later as a civilian going to uh, San Francisco and I wouldn't stay in one of the hotels. I was there with my wife. I wouldn't stay in one of the hotels because I remember them not accepting me uh, as a uh, sailor. Hmm. Very interesting. Um, 
What did you do when you went on leave? And where did you go? Uh, in Shanghai, we generally went to uh, a restaurant uh, because the, in the high, higher class Chinese uh, restaurant uh, or bar in Shanghai, uh, we only had uh, uh, other, other rest of the year. We didn't, we, I remember in Colombo Salon, we went, went ashore for one day, but all we did was go to a restaurant then because uh, we didn't know anything about the places and there were no facilities around. And we didn't stop in the other place. Okay. Uh, in, in Hawaii, uh, we went through there, but uh, I went to another a uh, small camp outside of Honolulu, uh, a small city, but again because there was food, not uh, anything else. Mm. But we didn't have any entertainment. Just curious, did you notice any more discrimination when you were in Hawaii or in America? Well, I wasn't in Hawaii but a couple of days. Okay. And I only got ashore once. Okay. Uh, Um, there are often pranks that people pull when they're in the military service to relieve stress or whatever reason you want to call it, get even with people. Do you remember any pranks that you were in on or that people pulled? I don't remember any pranks, but I remember that in Shanghai, the, the, Guys had some sneak some prostitutes on board, and I remember them questioning me because my quarters were right outside, right uh, next to one of the big gun emplacements. And what they did was they brought the girls up and hid them uh, under the tarpaulin of this gun emplacement, and. Uh, the captain and others wanted to know why I didn't see it, but I was on duty or asleep, and I didn't. And those guys were trying to keep the anyone from finding out. But that was the only. It was a pretty serious business. Uh, uh, we just didn't do anything other than work and and as I say, do sports and the ship. But pranks. Uh, I can't even remember okay. uh, anything. We would look at the merchant marines uh, when they when we refueled them and laugh at them, but uh, nothing. Why did you laugh at them? <laughs> well, they were always doing something funny. One fellow, uh, they were laughing so loud, my guys looking over. And one fellow had had uh, a tattoo on his penis, and he was showing by guys that. But there was, you know, really tough stuff. Okay. No, no, uh, we didn't have fun. We worked most of the time. Okay. Uh, either, as I say, we'd fuel ships, clean up our ship, shipping paint and all that stuff. But there was just not, uh, we didn't have, uh, see, we didn't get the stars. And we were alone. Mm -hmm. We were not in a convoy or anything. We were alone sailing around the ocean. Just refueling. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where did you get your oil from? We used it from our supply. Okay. We we also had uh, jet fuel too, in our ship, but we had uh, uh, the you see, you see we could fuel everybody else, but we had our own bunkers. Uh, mm. Mm -hmm. Um, we talked about the photos, and we're going to put those in. 
Do you remember any officers particularly? Only that uh, 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 the second officer who wanted to have trouble, but I do remember that the captain wrote a glowing report of my performance. And I felt <laughs> that he did it because here was a new thing coming along, a black officer, and he had showed his adaptability. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I was that good, but he said I was. And uh, I forget his name, but he was, he was a regular uh, Navy guy. He hadn't been promoted over the, uh, or anything other than he was Navy. Okay. In some branches of the service, they call them Mustangs. Did you call Well, the Mustang was this guy who had been there a long time and was promoted because mm -hmm. he had been in such a long time. Yeah. So you use that same term. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, after the service, do you recall the day your service ended? And where were you and what you were doing? Well, I was... I, I got out of the service at Great Lakes. I, I went back to Great Lakes and I don't remember any... Wait a minute. Mm -mm. I don't remember what happened other than... How did you get back to Great Lakes? Oh, well, I was... Uh, I, uh, I was discharged from sea duty in San Francisco and uh, then was on my own to get uh, back to uh, with orders to Great Lakes for discharge. Hmm. And I then uh, flew as I had flown out to, uh, I was on, when I flew out to San Francisco to go overseas, I spent a couple of uh, days in Chicago on leave and then flew rather than take the uh, the train, not just because of segregation, but because I could spend extra time and they didn't have transatlantic flights. Mm -hmm. I stopped in Elko, Nevada, and then uh, I think, I'm not sure, but I might have come back on a military plane to Chicago. I'm not sure now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what did you do afterwards? What after did you do the, service? Yeah, what did you do the first weeks or days after you were discharged? Well, in, in Chicago there were small neighborhoods and so I uh, uh, communicated with people on my block. But most of the girls had uh, gotten married while I was away, so that was it. Just socialized with neighbors. Okay. Uh, did you meet your wife at that point? Not that week, no. I met uh, a few weeks later, I did meet an old classmate, girl classmate, who had been dating another guy, and I started dating her, and eventually met my wife from uh, dating uh, this girl that I knew. And she was, your wife was from Chicago? Hmm? Your wife was from Chicago? Oh, yes. My wife. Uh. Oh yeah, my wife was uh, a Chicago, and not from my neighborhood, but from a uh, nearby neighborhood. Okay. Um, did you, well, you obviously went on to school. I went back to the University of Chicago. I had a bachelor's. I went back to the University of Chicago, got my master's. Then my major prop, I was on the research staff at uh, uh, University of Chicago, so I didn't have to take the GI Bill. I got more money from that. My major prof hour went down to St. Louis and the research that I had done at Chicago, I went down to St. Louis. He had me a member of the faculty mm -hmm. in, in uh, St. Louis and I was the first PhD in Missouri, black PhD in Missouri by 15 minutes. There was another guy who was in sociology, I was in chemistry. <laughs> But uh, uh, that's what I did. I went back to school uh, uh, and then got married uh, and went to St. Louis. Now, why did you go to St. Louis? But to get this the degree, okay. um, to get my Ph.D., 
uh, because my guy had gone down there. Did you stay in touch with any of your old military friends? Uh, the, uh, when I got married, yes, there was one of the fellows there in there that I uh, knew, uh, and he was in Chicago, and he was dating an airline stewardess, and I forget his name, but uh, I uh, was asking him, I wanted to ask him to be my best man because of the military service, but uh, my wife and others would have none of that, so mm -hmm. one of my neighbors was my best man. Okay. Um, did you join any veterans organizations afterwards? Well, now segregation came in. Okay, tell me uh, about that. I was in Missouri, and I wanted to join the reserve officers of the Navy, mm -hmm. but uh, they wouldn't have me because I was black. So I missed out on, you know, they had trips and so mm -hmm. forth uh, uh, that I would have enjoyed, but uh, couldn't do it. What, how did they, did they send you a letter saying, I'm sorry you can't join, or did they, how did they tell you you weren't acceptable for their work? Well, one of my fellow faculty members went and proposed me. Okay. And uh, they said, no. And no meant that you were a person of color. I just couldn't join. Okay. Did you join any other veterans organizations? Any other? Did you join any other veterans organizations? No. No. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sure. Uh, yes. Uh, the one that wouldn't have me uh, was the old, uh, you know, the the famous ones. Uh, I forget what the what the what the the major one was, but they didn't have Negroes in it uh, then either. And then there was another Veterans of Foreign Wars or something that uh, came along that accepted all veterans. And I was uh, I joined it, but I wasn't active, didn't do much okay. because I was in school. But uh, what, what, what's the big, it's still the big... Uh, American, um, Legion? Uh, American Legion? American hmm? Legion? American Legion? Yeah. Okay. The American Legion was segregated. Yeah. Okay. So I couldn't join. Um, tell me a little bit about, obviously you went through school, you went to St. Louis, you got your Ph.D. What else did you do after that? Tell me a little bit about your career. Uh -huh. I know it's a long one. Yeah, well, I uh, decided after the experiments that I had that in my social life I would work for the, the, the opportunities for blacks to get, uh, uh, for everybody to get an opportunity. So I've been in urban leagues uh, I've been the president and chairman of urban leagues throughout the country because the urban league is, is still mm -hmm. the mixed operation that tries to get working class people jobs. Uh, that was my social thing. Uh, and, uh, and then because I wasn't afraid and instead of saying See, uh, St. Louis was segregated when we, when I went there to get my degree. I got it in '51, and uh, blacks couldn't go to the the zoo except for one day a week. Uh, and then I left there, and uh, I the professor my professor wanted me to be in another field because he had a small department, so he. Ha encouraged me to take leave from St. Louis University, go get in another field. <clears throat> they were trying to build a homogeneous reactor, um, not one with all the uh, uh, carbon bricks and so forth. And so I went to Oak Ridge. One reason to get in that nuclear field, uh, but when I was going to try to go to uh, the laboratories, atomic laboratories 
in Chicago and in Long Island. Uh, I couldn't because blacks couldn't live in those neighborhoods. So uh, I went to Oak Ridge, which was segregated, as I say, and uh, I uh, was on the town council there. Had some <clears throat> had some problems. My wife lost a child there, and uh, the Ku Klux Klan uh, tried to kill me, shot at me at any rate. Mm. Uh, and uh, from then on, I just carbide Union Carbide mm -hmm. ran for the government, ran Oak Ridge. I had good reports and I had a scientific background that said I should be promoted to head a group. Okay. But they wouldn't promote me to head a group because segregation. Whites wouldn't supposedly wouldn't work for a black. So I told them either write me a letter of recommendation uh, and uh, let me go. What they did was to the government said we'll come to work for the Atomic Energy Commission, but that was government, and I said yuck. <laughs> so instead, I uh, they did promote me to a place in Cleveland. So I still work for you. I worked for Union Carbide for 33 years uh, before I went and spent 15 years at Wisconsin, which came because I was up here. I was director of university relations for at the end for Union Carbide. But uh, I moved uh, from uh, Oak Ridge to Cleveland to New York uh, to Manhattan and then up here. Okay. So uh, uh, well, I've got about, you'll see, I've got publications and all that stuff. Uh, my wife uh, went, when we were in Tennessee, she was one of the first uh, blacks to go to uh, there, uh, but uh, she couldn't finish law school there uh, because she was black. And when we then moved uh, to Cleveland, she got a bachelor's in Cleveland and then, um, then her doctorate in education in, at uh, Columbia University uh, when we were in, in Manhattan. Mm. So we moved around and I got a whole record of different things. I, I, as I got promoted, I was out of science into management. And, okay. All right. Uh, let me ask you a question. Do you think, how did the service experience affect your life? Well, I think it's the reason I had been willing to take chances. Uh, I didn't get support uh, that I would, would have wanted from my family, my mother and father, because they were afraid. But being in the military gave me a conviction that I could do a lot of things. Once I had become an officer with that sort of, in that sort of environment, uh, I didn't think anything could stop me. I did get discriminated against in carbide as far as, as promotion to a couple of jobs I should have gotten and guys practiced discrimination against me, but that wasn't, it wasn't overt. They didn't come out and say, I'm not doing it. I was the first black in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the uh, uh, management ranks and so forth in and, and Carbide, but I didn't get to promoted to being an officer uh, because I was black, in my view. So, uh, But uh, it all came, I think, because leaving the, the environment that I was in mm -hmm. and having uh, to go in a, in a strange environment with pressures for everybody in, in the Navy, uh, I think that that's what made me think that I could survive in uh, the world. I think 
from my personal view is that uh, all young people should have to have a period of some sort of service away from their family. And not necessarily would it have to be military, but I think they should have an experience where they have, uh, have to answer to some higher authority that's not parental. Yeah. I still believe that uh, today. Uh, and I'm not saying all white, but I say youngsters should, should have to have that kind of experience. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you would like to add that we haven't covered? Well, no, I just, uh, I can't think of anything other than, well, uh, my feeling again is when I, uh, I went to a business meeting down in Florida, uh, just after the end of, uh, not just after the end of uh, military desegregation, but I went to Florida while things were pretty rough. And I looked, and here were, oh, I saw, near Pensacola, I saw four or five black Navy officers. And I said, wow, holy, isn't that good that, that the experience that they had with uh, uh, blacks in, in command positions, regardless of race, we had achieved what was important. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that even today it's well known that the military gives uh, 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 minorities uh, uh, the best opportunity still. Mm -hmm. When you look, <laughs> I look at uh, uh, the Army, Navy, football team, and of course I'm going to root for Navy, but uh, I look there and they got all these black guys running around, and I say, wow, this is wonderful. I think that uh, we're getting better, we're getting better, and I'm hopeful that, uh, that uh, President Obama is going to make it, uh, make it even uh, Better, and I think he, he has the capability of, of being a, a good president. And I'm, I won't be around to see it since I'm going to be 90, but uh, uh, I think that the United States is going to be a better place. Uh, you have to remember that the projections are that uh, European whites are going to be a minority mm -hmm. in uh, uh, 25 years or so. And I hope that uh, that means that the other people will treat everybody as uh, uh, an American. Hmm. But uh, it's interesting, you know, I, uh, I keep saying black or Negro or something, and it's uh, very fascinating to me that now we're African Americans. That's a step forward. That's true. Do you remember, and I, this is a very personal question, you mentioned that you occasionally were called by a very negative name. Oh, sure. I've been called uh, uh, derogatory name, nigger and everything else by people, and I've uh, I fought as a kid. That's, we had neighborhood fights with, okay. with whites and so forth. I, I, uh, I grew up in a rough neighborhood. And uh, I, I, I say I passed a civil service exam in Chicago that helped me uh, pay my way through the university. Uh, I was a page in the library, I stacked books in the library, passed a civil service exam that got me that job. I made $30 a month, out of which they took $2 for retirement pay. And I worked for my father, who was a carpenter on the weekend. I worked every job I could while I was still in the university. And I still got my degree. I was used to and have been used to hard work all my life. Mm. Uh, 
I recommend it for uh, character building for uh, even the wealthy. But I don't think that uh, that any man can decide exactly who you are going to be or what you're going to strive for. A part of it always has to be what you uh, want and how you treat other people. So I try very hard not to be abusive or mean to uh, anybody. I live in a place with all women. I try and, and help them without being condescending. I don't just see a person in a wheelchair and jump and say, hey, I've got to help them because they're in a wheelchair. I try very hard to assume that humans want to be self-sufficient and I should help them when I have something that they, they need and if it happens to be strength, yes. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? Hmm? Anything else you'd like to add? Those no, are the end of my questions. No, I just, uh, it's an interesting project. Okay. And I think, see, we have a project like that here. But, uh, they have us relating to the grade school kids hmm. uh, in the Richfield uh, Elementary and Middle School, some of our experiences. And they invited me to uh, speak. Uh, and, and they didn't say, hey, come and speak because you're black. But the thing that I've been looking at here is uh, they wanted uh, me to talk about uh, uh, a patriot. A per, what's a patriot? Mm -hmm. I then talked about being a patriot and uh, what it meant to me and my experiences. And I told them that I had gone into the segregated Navy and so forth. But I've gone back since and we shared, people here share with those schools experiences. And they want the kids to, to rather than just get it from the textbook, they want to, the kids to hear those of us who've had the experience. And I think that's a good project. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you very much for your interview. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we're all done. Thank you.